So to get into this and give you a little demonstration of you know, how you can set this stuff up in STAR, we'll look at our first application. It's shown here. This is just a simple vat mixture with a paddle. Um, we're spinning it up to about 240 RPM. And as you can see, as it's spinning up, you have a well that's developing. With this model, we're using a Larian multiphase uh, between the air and water phases. And we're using a volume of fluid to define the sharp interface between uh, these two phases. <clears throat> so we're going to open up this model, try to go through it real quickly and kind of investigate one, the geometry, look at the region definition, show how we can apply motion to this, show how we set up the phases, set up the phase interactions, and also get some engineering values out of this, such as evaluating what the shaft power requirements are. So here we are at our model in uh, STAR. Uh, we can see the model right here. And if we kind of jump over to the geometry real quick, um, we actually put this model together using a little add-on in STAR called Add Mixedis, kind of shown here. And what this does is it automates geometry building, uh, primarily for mixers. It has a number of different paddle designs. It'll actually run through everything, create the entire geometry. You can create the entire analysis for you. Uh, hey, we just, uh, Clay? Yep. Is that, is that a paid add-on? No, it's... It is a free add-on, although you have to request a license for it because cool. uh, they do want to track. They want to track who's using yeah. it. No, it's just I, I, you know how it goes. I, I dislike, you know, showing stuff where, oh yeah, this really cool thing, but you got to pay extra for it. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to confirm. Here we go. Uh, one thing that is nice is it will create the geometry for you shown here. And these are actually parameterized geometries. So we've got like the impeller blade. We could go through, adjust the blade height, the blade length. You could adjust the angle of the blades, the number of the blades, um, and do a number of, basically just roll this into a, a design study uh, mm. if you're looking at optimizing. Right. But, but I mean, come out, come out of the gate. If if we were doing this and we just had one blade and be done with it, mm -hmm. come on, it would, would have taken us what? You make the geometry, you throw it in, 10 minutes. Uh, it wouldn't take that long. I mean, that's what I thought because you're showing overset, there's overset mesh, right? Yeah. And there's so, a geometry, so it's not even that. It just gives you the flexibility of, of having paddle designs right there at your fingertips, right? Yeah, I mean, so, it depends what paddle design you're looking at. For this simple yeah, yeah, paddle yeah. design, yeah, it's simple. We could have created it ourselves. But okay. then they've got like, you know, your boat oar designs and some <laughs> ribbon mixers and things I get. Well, that would be a little bit more complicated. Right on. No? Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Back. Yeah. So you see, we got like our two regions here. We've got our static region, which is pretty much the tank walls. And then we've got the impeller region, which is right next to um, our paddle that's going in. And that's defined over here. Now, first thing we'd like to do is we need to apply this motion to the impeller region. Um, what we suggest doing is kind of going down to tools and we have a couple field functions set up. One's just our basic RPM field function, the scalar value, this can be changed at any time. Uh, but we go over and transfer that to a um, kind of a field function to do one, two things. One, transfer it to radians per second. Um, Star can do this yourself itself, but what I really wanted to do was basically add a ramp onto it. So within the first second, it goes from zero to full speed. And then after the first second, we're holding it at full speed. And this is kind of the Boole Boolean statement for doing this type of uh, function in here where we have our boolean statement right here if time is less than one you know you've got the value if true a semicolon the value if false so now that we have our field function for uh velocity defined a time dependent velocity that's defined we can go over to the motions and create a new rotational motion we want the axis to be in the 
uh, Z direction. And when we go to our rotational rate, it's easy just to go over and call back to that field function. And we've got that set right there. Now, if we go back up to our region, we go to our motion specification and now just grab that rotation that we defined. And we've got rotation now defined on this rigid body part. We can see we have an interface between this. Now, one thing to notice is, well, we've got the static region, we've got the shaft going up through the center. So that shaft is actually gonna be turning too, but it's a static region. If you want to have a little bit more uh, realism on this, we can also just go locally to the shaft on our tangential velocity specification. Now change that to a rotation rate. And do, do. our relative, uh, while relative rotation, then we apply our field function and go back and call that field function again for omega. So now that we've got our rigid body motion set up in our model, we can now go over to the continuum and apply our physics. And we've got most of our physics already set up except the Illyrium defining the multiphase and defining the uh, interaction. So for this model, we just want to grab two phases. We're going to be simple and grab it as uh, air and water. Oh. Get our constant density for the water. And we can rename this water. And again, for the air. And it's simple, just gas, constant density for now. So if we kind of look over at the water real quick, um, you know, the default values for anything that's going to be liquid, it's going to be water, anything air, it's going to be, or anything that's gas is going to be air within star CCM plus. Uh, kind of open up our material properties for dynamic viscosity. We can kind of see you've got a constant dynamic viscosity for Newtonian fluids. If you didn't want that, if you had something a little bit more exotic, you got a couple non-Newtonian models set here, or you can define a field function for something that's custom. So it doesn't have to be a simple Newtonian fluid for your liquid phase. For the phase interactions, it's also going to be quite simple, defining the volume of fluid phase interaction, which we kind of already have down here. For volume fluid, we still need to define what the uh, primary phase air and the secondary phase is going to be. Now we're almost ready to run, but the first thing you also have to do is define what your initial conditions are. We have the water is going to be filled up to some point here, so it wants to know what the volume fraction is going to be. And we have it set up for composite. It's asking for the water. And again, we go down to the tools in our field functions, and we've got one that's already defined, uh, liquid fraction, uh, where basically we're saying anything in the z-axis under this height value, about 25 millimeters, is going to be 100% water. Everything above that is going to be air. So again, we just go through and apply this field function. Now, to make sure that we have that done correctly, we'd like to see what the uh, surface is going to be. Um, and you'd like to see what surface is going to be during your simulation. You can create a quick ISO surface based on yeah, the volume fraction of the water. I want to tell that the team that that's watching that what Clay's doing, he's doing a real analysis. Um, if you want to just make a, a demo, you know, like here, I can make a, a mixing analysis in five keystrokes. <laughs> um, he could have set it up with some macros and other stuff, but what we try to do is we want to make these seminars as user guides something like no it, this is real this is what you really have to do to make a simulation and not smoke and mirrors that yeah you do have to go through and it can look daunting at first you know with these picks but once you're sort of like past the, the fud if you're certainly doubt on the interface it, it really makes sense it really has a flow to it um yeah it, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, this, it's very logical. 
It's just, uh, so this is why he's doing his picks. This is this is real. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you. Yeah, as you can see here, we've gone through <clears throat> this little green button up here. This will just initialize your solution, take your basic input uh, initial conditions, apply it to your mesh, and we can see we now have a flat water level. It's about 25 millimeters of uh, where we stated before. Uh, and just to show you real quick, if you want to apply, um, you know, make a couple quick reports um, to put out what the shaft torque would be, this is kind of already set up in STAR. Go into new report and it's going to be a moment. And what you want to do is just go back to that impeller region, uh, not the whole impeller region, but you can grab the main uh, surfaces that will be on the, um, the paddle blade itself and you have a moment function that you could rename as torque. And with one click, we can go to uh, create, monitor, and plot, and we have a plot that we can look at what the output torque would be. Um, kind of doing the uh, cooking show method. This analysis, we did run it. Um, we ran it for about 12 seconds that you saw in the animation. And I think that took, six hours on 32 cores or something like that to run. Um, at the end of the run, we get kind of our velocity plots. Um, this is what you'd see at the end of the 12 seconds demonstration where we've got our well that's been developed. And if we looked at our shaft output torque, uh, we've got the torque plot here. And we can see during that one second ramp up I did, there's high torque as everything's accelerating and then the torque kind of steadily comes down and it's drifting off a little bit as we're developing that well. 